So now we're in the final part of our tutorial. And we're going to create an NFT Minter DAP. This DAP is going to be built in React. And we've provided the React boilerplate template for you. Take a look at what it looks like here. Someone can come and they can actually mint our NFT. So let's go look at the code and the setup. The first thing first is we're going to need the contract address that you deployed using Hardhat or Remix. So you're going to get that from the Hardhat. Secondly, we're going to need the, this contract file. So our contract ABI file, which is this JSON file, is cadena nft.json. So you're going to copy and paste that from this contracts folder over here as well. So create a folder called contracts and then put the name of your contract here. And then please be sure to link this on line three. Right after that, the next step is we're going to need some metadata. So we're going to go to Hashlips Art Engine. And in the build folder, in the JSON folder, you're going to copy over this underscore metadata JSON file, everything in it and all its contents. And then over in a React app, we're going to create that file, NFT underscore metadata. And we're going to link that right here in the root of our folder. So if I open that, you'll see it has all our NFT metadata. Now, if you wanted, you can actually link that same file from Pinata on the IPFS, but sometimes Pinata can be slow. And so for the sake of the tutorial, we decided to link it locally. Now let's fire up our local server. So again, our steps are we need our contract address. Step one. Step two is we actually need our contract ABI file, which is this JSON file. And then step three is we need all this NFT metadata from Hashlips. And just to run you through the code, we're we'll writing this function. Check if our wallet's connected, and we've gone through this in our Ethereum 101 course. We're reading basic data from our contract, which you will see gets displayed here. But this function mint token is the most important part. Once we've connected to our contract, one of the, the other steps that we've got to do is make sure we've got the correct metadata URI. And so we're going to go back to Pinata. And we're going to get the content ID. So QMTA2 of this metadata folder. Because what we're going to do is we're going to read each metadata file in this folder. It's taking some time to load. So you just see in real time that sometimes IPFS can be very slow. But while that loads, I've taken it on my own to load it up beforehand. And so what we're really doing is taking all of this metadata right here, all the value, key pairs and values in this object, and we're rendering that out. And this is what's actually going to be minted. So you see here, we're taking the person's wallet address, who's going to be the NFT holder, and then we're passing in this metadata. And we're setting a price. This is the most important part of this entire application. And this is how the NFT actually gets minted and transferred. And we've set up the logic for this on the smart contract, but this is the logic for it on the front end. And just to scroll down, you see right here, we're calling that function and we're passing in this metadata and the number. So you know, for NFT number one, it would be one dot JSON, two dot JSON, three dot JSON. And then if someone chooses to mint number one, they're minting all that metadata and then associating it with their address and storing it on chain. And this is really the heart of what an NFT is really. It's just 
taken metadata and associating that with either a digital or a real life object. A real life object could be property or real estate or digital. It could be a piece of artwork, music, and th through the minting process, storing that on chain and assigning it to someone's wallet ID. So if you have any questions, let us know on the Discord. And congrats for making it this far.